Thank you very much, and thank you for being here to discuss the relentless work that we're doing to defeat the China virus and protect the people of Florida, great state. Just got the endorsement of the sheriffs, and they are amazing people. Law enforcement in Florida is very, very, very first rate. We appreciate the that endorsement in particular. First, I want to provide an update to our response and on our response to Hurricane. So the hurricane is uh, — I'm not sure it's a hurricane yet. It's, uh, it's right now yeah, it's sort of projected as a storm slash hurricane, right? What's going to happen? Is that looking like a hurricane to you? I think I think that that it did reach Category One status, but it's kind of right so out the right at the there. border. Let's not let it get any bigger. But it's uh, it's pretty severe, nevertheless. A lot of water coming in. It's approach, approaching the Florida coast. The storms already passed through Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and I've approved emergency declarations for both of those areas. FEMA is closely coordinating with Florida with your governor. Happens to be on my right. Good job, by the way, Ron. You're doing a great job. And we're in constant contact with Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, and anybody else that may have a problem. But we think it's going to be uh, — it's going to work out very well. We have FEMA all set to go in some of those states that are already there. I ask all of those in the path of the storm to follow the guidance of your state, local, and tribal officials. My administration will be here for you every single step of the way. We've done everything we can do, and now we're just waiting for the storm. And uh, I guess it's right behind me. It's following me. We're grateful to be joined by Health and Human Services Secretaries doing a fantastic job on COVID, or whatever you want to call it. There are many different names. All we know is it came from China, and they shouldn't have let it happen. But Alex Azar is here. Thank you, Alex, very much. Governor Ron DeSantis doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Previous governor and now Senator Rick Scott. He's representing Florida very well in uh, — in Washington, and I just spoke with Marco Rubio, and likewise, he's doing a great job, and he sends his regards. State Senator Wilton Simpson, thank you very much, Senator. Great job you're doing. State Representative Daniel Perez, Daniel, thank you, Daniel, very much. Pinellas County Commissioner Kathleen Peters, hi, Good Kathleen. To see you. Thanks very much. And CEO Safety Net Hospital Alliance of Florida, Justin. Senior, thank you. Thank you, Justin, very much. Very much for being here. So we continue to take very aggressive action to combat the virus in Florida. And your state officials are amazing. They've been working so hard. The rate of positive cases in Florida has now declined. It's declining. And hospitalizations are declining in most places and pretty steadily. And we think there's going to be a big decline starting very soon. There is currently over 21 percent inpatient hospital bed capacity available, so there's plenty of bed capacity, and over 16 percent ICU capacity available, and some of that's going to be emptying out as people get better. They do get better, and they get better pretty fast. Statewide, we're providing additional resources and personnel to help save lives. We remain concerned about Florida, about Miami, and in a certain area of Miami in particular, but local officials are working very hard, and we think we have that one on the right step also. The test positivity rate has declined over the last week, and in some cases very substantially, as have hospitalization levels. But we must further reduce the spread, and that's what we're doing. We're working closely with health officials on the ground to support this effort. The single best way to defeat the disease is personal responsibility. You've heard me say it. You've heard a lot of people say it, actually. I urge all Americans to protect the elderly. The fact is, you have to do the social distancing thing. It's a very important socially distance. Wear a mask when you cannot avoid crowded places or socially distance. And wash your hands as often as possible. Almost half of all deaths nationwide have been in nursing homes and assisted living centers. And I have to say, the state of Florida, with regard to the nursing homes, has done an incredible job, really an incredible job. They watched what was happening in some places, even beyond our own country. The other other countries, they were seeing what was happening with the elderly, and particularly in nursing homes. And, Ron, you've done a great job in that. We appreciate it. Uh, I have to say that there's been a big surge of the China virus in other countries, very big countries that we thought we they were doing a good job, and they were. They were doing a great job in some cases. But 
uh, big headline in the Wall Street Journal just yesterday and an editorial that all of a sudden they started to surge. So countries that we thought were doing great uh, turned out to have difficulty, big difficulty. I won't name the countries, but you know them. There are a lot of them, actually. The average age of those who succumb to the virus is 78 years old. We're also closely monitoring the situation in Latin America and its impact in the United States. Latin America has more confirmed cases than anywhere else in the world, actually substantially more, They're having a hard time. We've uh, sent many ventilators to Latin America. We've sent many ventilators to different countries in Europe, Africa, and all over the world. We've, we're making thousands of ventilators now a month. We started off with essentially very little, and we've become a ventilator manufacturer, so to speak. And we're helping a lot of, a lot of countries. We've sent them to France. We've sent them to uh, Italy, a lot to Italy. We sent them to Mexico. We sent them to Russia. Moscow's having a tremendous problem. And we've sent them to a lot of different countries, many. And uh, we have a full supply in our country. The amazing thing is we started with very few, and not one person that needed a ventilator did not get a ventilator. So that's a pretty amazing statistic. We have nearly 1,400 federal personnel on the ground already in Florida, including personnel supporting nursing homes. We have doctors, military doctors. They're incredible and very talented people. And frankly, they're very brave people, but they're all over the state helping uh, with your medical folks. And Ron asked if he could get some extra people here. We did it immediately. In the last week, we've opened five new surge testing sites in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood Beach, Pompano Beach, and two in Miami. We're sending rapid test kits to 701 Medicare and Medicaid certified nursing homes in the state. We've also sent multiple shipments of protective equipment to all of the nursing homes. And as I said, on ventilators, I can also talk about in Florida and Miami, they have uh, everything they need. They have, uh, they don't need any. We've sent a lot, they don't need any. Uh, testing wise, we've tested almost 60 million people throughout the country, which is about six times more than any other country, close to six times more than any other country. Uh, we have, uh, if you look at India, they're at 11 million we're going to be at over 60 million. So they've done a tremendous job in testing, considering we started off with very little. It was a uh, unknown disease, and it was an unknown test. FEMA, HHS, and the private sector have delivered more than 10 million N95 masks, 43 million surgical masks, 19.7 million gowns, and 1.3 billion medical gloves to Florida. 1.3 billion gloves, Ron. We've secured 90% of the world's supply of remdesivir, which has been very, very successful, and have sent over 143 vials to Florida hospitals as a uh, really something that's very special and we're working on very hard. Operation Warp Speed, today we reached a $2 billion agreement with Sanofi and GSX to conduct clinical trials and mass produce 100 million doses of vaccine. What we've done is uh, rather incredible, I have to say. We have uh, many companies, great companies, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, Pfizer, many companies are very close to getting the vaccine. We think it's going to be uh, uh, in a very short time from now. And we're set with our military to deliver the vaccine. We have a, a tremendous military delivery service, and that will be doing it. It's called Logistics, and they will be taking the vaccine and bringing it all over the country. And I'm sure that we'll be supplying it beyond our country also, but we're going to have it very soon. We're also uh, having uh, tremendous work done on other treatments other than vaccines. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of great things in the pipeline. I think things that are going to be really spectacular. I'm very excited about therapeutics because therapeutically, I think we have answers that are really looking good. In fact, if I had my choice, I'd probably initially maybe you go with the therapeutics because you walk into the hospital, they get a shot, or they they do a transfusion depending on the company and the and what they're doing, and uh, a short time later, just people get better. So we're looking at that very very strongly. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Rick and Ron and everybody. They've done, done really a fantastic job. We've worked together so long and so hard, and uh, this is something that came upon us. It should have never happened, but it came upon us. And there's been great bravery from our doctors and our nurses, our frontline people. And uh, we're very proud of what's happening, and we'll get rid of it. We'll 
beat it, and it'll be soon. We want to get our schools open. We want to get our businesses open. Now, much of the country is open. We've set records on a uh, number of employees and hiring and uh, employment. Basically, if you look at the number, I think last month was the highest number ever hired in one month. And the month before that, we broke that record. So from that standpoint, we've done well. Retail sales set a record last month. So we're doing really record increase. So we're doing really well. And uh, I think this will end hopefully very soon. But we're fighting hard and we're fighting smart. And uh, I'd like to ask your governor to say a few words, please, Ron. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Welcome back to Florida. Thanks for all your support. Uh, we are monitoring very closely the track of Hurricane Isaias. Uh, both the 11 a.m. and the 5 p.m. advisories from National Hurricane Center tacked it a little bit closer to the Florida coast. I think it's pretty clear we will get, at a minimum, tropical storm force wind impacts, likely hurricane force wind impacts. We don't know for sure whether uh, the eye will actually interact with the coast of Florida. Uh, we're looking actually um, probably northern part of Palm Beach County, maybe a little bit north of that is kind of where they're going. Obviously, we'll know more. Um, so I would just urge Floridians, just uh, particularly if you're from Deerfield Beach up until uh, the Brevard Volusia area, uh, you are under a, a hurricane watch. Uh, make sure you have your plan. Make sure you have seven days of food and supplies and medicine. Uh, there could be some power outages and uh, it's an ongoing very fluid situation. As it does move west, it's kind of weakening a tad. And if it strengthens, we think it may end up going further east. Uh, but just um, continue to listen to your local officials. We'll be um, providing updates multiple times a day uh, throughout the weekend. Um, and obviously, the federal government's been great helping. We did submit for a landfall uh, um, emergency declaration. So, so we look yeah. forward uh, to that support. And we also want to thank uh, the administration for supporting us uh, with the fight against uh, COVID-19. Uh, anytime we needed anything, you know, we would talk to the president, vice president, and we would get it. So when someone, when we started to see the hospital admissions really pick up, uh, the doctors were prescribing more remdesivir. Uh, so we told them, hey, you guys have been sending us enough for when we had very low census. Now that the census is higher, can we get more? Can we move up these shipments? And Alex was involved, the president, we got it up, and so we've accelerated a number of weeks of shipments, so they've been able to have the, um, um, the medications that they need. Um, also thank, um, you know, CDC put out, I think, important guidance last Friday that didn't really get much attention about people going back to work. Um, a lot of employers in Florida had, be, had been uh, demanding a negative PCR test in order to go back to work. CDC recommends against that now, and I think that is exactly the right thing compared to what we've seen. Uh, these PCR tests, you can test positive for 12 weeks. So we have people that are not infectious, have no live virus, and they're getting a positive test 10 days, 20 days out. Um, and so CDC recommends going to a symptom-based approach. We are, we've put that out the state of Florida to all the employers. The symptom-based approach really is the more effective approach. Um, and I think that that will just help uh, people be able uh, to go. You know, if you're symptomatic and you test positive, obviously, you know, we're inferring live virus there. But the asymptomatic, um, you know, a 12-week window, and we really don't know whether you're infectious or not. Um, so I think the, what we're going to be doing because of, of what you guys have just sent us additionally the wait times on the labs, it's just gotten backed up. We're doing so many tests. Sometimes it takes seven to 10 days to get the results back. So what we're gonna do is we've already focused on our symptomatic test takers, which are a minority of the people testing. Uh, we have agreements with labs to get it turned around quicker. And then the federal government has sent us these point of care antigen tests. So we're gonna have 1,250 of those a day. So we're gonna convert some of our bigger test sites into point of care antigen testing for symptomatic and elderly people, probably in Miami-Dade. So this way, they go, they get the result in 15 minutes, which is good for them, and then it gets reported to the state. So we have a, a real-time understanding of the positivity, everything's going on. When we get the test results reported, some of these tests are from two or three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and these data dumps. So I think it'll help us be able to understand the prevalence better. So that's an important tool. So I just wanted to say thank you for, uh, for sending those machines to us. And you have the numbers in five minutes to 15 minutes or something nice. Of that's that, correct. Especially yep. for the elderly. Uh, Rick Scott, please. Sure. Well, first off, um, you know, when I was governor, you were very helpful in the hurricanes we had. And I just want to tell you, I talked to um, uh, the uh, governor of Puerto Rico this morning, and she was very appreciative. Um, you have uh, FEMA's there, FEMA's being helpful. You know, they're 
they've got some flooding. Uh, so she was traveling uh, the island, but she said, I said, is there anything you need out of the federal government? And they, she, they said, Every, uh, the, you know, you guys have done a great job. That's so great, Rick. Thank th you thanks, very much. Thanks for doing that. And uh, I just want to thank you for your commitment to the vaccine. Uh, I know that's a I'll be a game changer uh, when that happens, and I know you, you and your administration have been very aggressive in making sure that happens in the testing. So I just want to tell you, I think you've you've done a great job trying to get make sure, you know, everybody is getting this done as quickly as possible. Right. Uh, I think the governor is saying some of the issues that that I'm sure a lot of states are having, but I know the Trump administration is working hard. I want to thank uh, Secretary Azar. Um, his team has done a great job. Um, the, uh, I'm going to tell you, Steve Hahn has done a great job. I mean, if you look at what the president talked about with regard to therapeutics, that would not happen but for HHS and but for the FDA and the authority you gave to doctors to be able to make decisions and be doctors. And I know you're trying to get that information out as quickly as possible so people uh, make good decisions. So I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Rick. And the speed of approval is uh, just a tiny fraction of the time that it would have been in a, uh, let's say, another administration. It's uh, the FDA has been fantastic. They get, they're getting things through, Ron, at levels that nobody ever thought possible. We're close to a vaccine. We think we're close to a vaccine, and that's been a matter of months as opposed to many years. It could be take many years, and we think we're going to have a great answer very, very soon. Alex, please. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so we're working very closely with FEMA as well as with the emergency uh, authorities here in Florida on the hurricane situation. And of course, would advise all Floridians, follow the advice of your state and local leaders as to what to do. But that advice may be a little bit different this time because of COVID. So normally you might evacuate. This time more advice is gonna focus on sheltering in place for Floridians who live at home, as well as for those in long-term care centers like nursing homes or for people who are hospitalized. Um, in addition, we'll, we're recommending and working with the state to establish shelters that would be non-congregate places for, shel for sheltering in place. If you do end up in a place that's a congregate setting, we, it's the same advice that we give in a non-emergency situation. Wear face coverings, practice good physical distance, good personal hygiene. As the president said, we've had just, a, I think it's a historic 24 hours on the development of therapeutics and vaccines under the president's Operation Warp Speed Initiative. Uh, yesterday afternoon, the president made a historic national call to action for people to donate plasma. So I call on Floridians, uh, please, if you have tested positive and recovered from COVID, go to coronavirus.gov and learn how you can donate your plasma and save lives through the American Red Cross, through America's blood banks, um, you can make a real difference. And then as the president said just this morning, we announced the sixth, the sixth vaccine uh, candidates from Sanofi GSK, uh, 100 million doses with an option for 500 million more. So that's now six major historic investments to bring us vaccines uh, coming into the fall. And then also today, out of our National Institutes of Health, the RADx initiative led by Dr. Collins, which is Next Generation Testing and Diagnostics, announced a quarter of a billion dollars of funding on seven novel diagnostics that we're investing in that we believe could bring millions of additional diagnostics to the table as soon as September. Thanks to your leadership. Thank, Thank you very much, Bruce. I appreciate it. Please, go ahead. Mr. President, um, thank you for being here in Florida today. Um, we appreciate your foresight um, to organize our major corporations around this country to produce the type of equipment we need, the PPE we need here in the country. We're looking forward to your leadership in the future to make sure we bring those manufacturing jobs back to the United States from all over the world so that we're better prepared in the future. You work very closely with our governor. The, the governor did a tremendous job um, making sure that we were protecting our most vulnerable. And so the state of Florida really shut down the long-term care facilities and nursing homes and, and other facilities. And it was a leadership from your administration and the governor's office that allowed that to happen. And, and uh, we're very proud of the fact that we have the best pharmaceuticals anywhere in the world. Yeah. And you know the, the half-life now, these are coming every day, stage two and three trials for vaccines. We're very excited that um, hopefully by the, before the end of the year, we're gonna have a vaccine. But the therapeutic medicines are, are tremendous, and that's a, that is a um, something for you to be very proud of, and your administration's done a tremendous job for the state of Florida and the country. So okay. thank you. And I just signed an executive order whereby uh, the gentleman on my right can go out and buy your uh, <laughs> prescription drugs at a number that you'd never thought possible. 
and I assume you're going to be doing that pretty soon, Ron, right? Yeah, no, we, uh, we, well, Wilton was involved in, uh, in that legislation in the, in the legislature, so, so we're excited about it. I'd also say just with respect to the long-term care, uh, your administration is sending to a number of facilities throughout the country, nursing homes, point of care tests there as well. Mm -hmm. Now, we are testing all the staff every two weeks. Uh, we have over 200,000 staff because we have over 4,000 facilities. And then if there's an infection, then we we'll go and, and look to see if the residents need to be tested. And we've already tested all the residents throughout this pandemic. But uh, the point of care, I think it's going to be less even for staff or residents, but for allowing visitors again. We've not had visitors in these places since mid-March mm -hmm. because we feared having the introduction of the virus. And I think that that's the right decision to protect life, but that comes at an enormous emotional cost because you have elderly folks who want to have that human connection. And so if you have a 15-minute test, you can have the family members go take the test. They can go in and see. That is important for health too, because mental well-being right. and everything is just really, really important. So I want to thank you uh, for, for for doing that. It's really good. I think it'd be interesting. You know, Justin um, really can give you a good a synopsis about where the Florida trends are. I mean, we, you know, if you if you kind of read what 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 people will put out versus what the data we see, there's obviously a yeah. discrepancy there. And Justin's been uh, there, and so we talk with all his CEOs. We talk with him every day about capacity, about the trends, about the discharges. And, um, you know, we've been able to, to handle this. Um, we got some great people working very hard, uh, but really there was a lot of foresight into using the last few months to prepare for when we would have yeah. an uptick. Ahead, yeah, our, our, uh, our alliance has hospitals running from, from Pensacola, all, Pensacola all the way down to Miami. Uh, and uh, we've seen probably between 40 and 50 percent of the COVID patients, positive patients in the state of Florida. Uh, we are coming through a, a difficult month, uh, but there are real reasons, and I think you touched on them in your opening remarks, for cautious optimism right now. Uh, we have seen almost every one of our members has seen either their, their census leveling off or actually starting to decline. And there's real hope, I think, that August we're going to see some acceleration there. Uh, it's, it, the, the key is to keep working together. I think some of the difference makers in terms of the outcomes in Florida and why Florida has fared relatively well. Uh, has to do with the decisions around long-term care facilities and requiring two positive tests before a patient is discharged from a hospital mm -hmm. to a long-term care facility. Uh, I also think that the state has done an excellent job of relieving pressure on the hospitals. We have a lot of patients, elderly patients, that are in the hospital, they're COVID positive, but they've stabilized and they no longer need to be in the hospital and you can't discharge them to a long-term care facility because they're still COVID positive. The state, that creates a lot of pressure on the hospital to have that patient still in there. Right. It, it takes up capacity. The state's done a great job of setting up COVID only facilities that have allowed us to get those mm -hmm. patients out of the hospital, uh, get them to a comfortable place where they, they get the treatment that they need, they get the services that they need, but the hospital has the capacity. Um, our hospitals are all participating in these, uh, these clinical trials. Uh, remdesivir was one that our hospitals participated in. They're participating in the antibody uh, studies, uh, and, uh, and we have a lot of hope on those as well. And uh, I think that the cooperation between the state and federal government is something that, that we've certainly seen firsthand, and, and we definitely appreciate all the work that's gone in. Well, you've really done a good job in the nursing homes. When I look at you compared to other places, frankly, mm -hmm. you've really done a great job in nursing homes. I know you focused on it, but that's been a very good situation compared to other places. Yeah, and I mean, so, you know, w when we did these COVID-only facilities, you know, our thought is, one, we're doing testing in the nursing homes. There's, there's a lot of nursing home residents who don't develop really significant symptoms either. But if they can't be isolated in the nursing home, you know, where can you do? You can send them to the hospital, but they don't need to be hospitalized. So we have these facilities that can accept the transfers. Then when they clear the illness, then they go back. So it, it's good for the resident um, if they don't have to be in the hospital, not have to go. But then for the other residents to not have somebody there right. spreading it, because that, you know, we obviously don't want to see it spread anywhere. But if there's one place we don't want to see it spread, it's in the long term care facilities. Well, that's been really an amazing job. Kathleen, please. Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to be here. Um, you know, I want to thank you and your administration and the governor and his administration. Um, I've had the wonderful privilege of serving as a, a mayor of a city and then the House of Representatives and now as a county commissioner. Um, and I've always held very tight to home rule. And I think that our success, particularly in Florida, is because you left it to the local communities to, to determine what was right for each individual community. And, um, and I think that way we were able to st strategically come up with our approach 
that would really be comprehensive. And when we needed help, Governor, your departments were there. They were right there to help us. And um, and the CARES Act that we received, $170 million, helped us not only prepare for PPE um, and do training and testing, um, but we've done a lot of training in every single nursing home. And, and that's something where ACA really stepped up and helped us with and made sure that we had teeth that we could go in there and, and really ensure that they allowed us in because at first they didn't even allow us in. So um, so providing the resources has is, is been great, but allowing us the autonomy to to come up with a plan that's individualized for each individual county, I think, has been the best um, way to attack this approach. So I really appreciate um, kind of taking the hands-off approach and just providing the resources and, and letting the local community do what they need to do. And it's been very successful. Our positive rate now um, went down from a 14 percent to a, a six or seven oh, percent. So, yeah. so in Pinellas County, we're doing really, really well, and our our nursing homes are are doing well, and our hospitals as well are are having relief. And so, so. Okay. We're in really great shape, and so thank you for all the resources. Good job. Thank you. Really good job. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for having me. I'm the uh, lone Miamian <laughs> here uh, at the table, but I wanted to say thank you for your leadership under this time. Uh, you know, we we have two great senators that have done a phenomenal job, and Senator Rubio, although he's not here, um, has really been the flag bearer when it came to PPE. And in my district, uh, which is in Miami, um, I've seen the small businesses survive because of your assistance um, and, and leadership during this time. Um, and at the same time, I think Senator Rick Scott um, has been very um, vocal in making sure that taxpayer dollars don't uh, get used for some of the states that are trying to use them as a bailout. Right. And I think that's very important. It's a, it's a point that you continue to hammer along with the senator, and it's one that, that we here in Florida have to continue to voice as well. Um, but in Miami, the assistance has been uh, so important, uh, specifically when it comes to the elderly population. I think there's a stat that I had seen a couple days ago that that's stuck in my mind, which was roughly around eighty million dollars has been used for for meal assistance for the elderly, and I have mm -hmm. and I have a very elderly population in my district, and that comes out to about nine million meals for individuals that are not able to go out um, for reasons um, that are private to their own, but but nonetheless wouldn't be possible um, without your leadership. So on behalf of Miami, um, we want to say thank you. Uh, very much and once again wel welcome back home to Florida uh, that that welcome on the way over here I've never been a part of a motorcade mr. president but I got chills uh, the love here for you is very real it was an amazing group of people wasn't it yes sir as long as we rode and we rode a long time mm -hmm. we had tremendous crowds and we appreciate it and we love Miami we'll take care of it okay yes, sir. great job you're doing Thank do you have any questions please mr. for anybody mr. president mr. president how Mr. President, how concerned are you about your political standing in Florida, given the number of deaths we've been seeing in recent days? Here? Well, based on the polls, I'm doing very well in Florida, and uh, the uh, local government is doing a fantastic job. I think we're doing really a fantastic job, and we're getting everything that they need. They've, for the most part, had it anyway. We had it all stocked up and stacked up. And you remember I used to say the cupboards were bare federally from the federal standpoint. We had very empty cupboards. We, Whether it was the military or the cupboards for medical, they were bare. And uh, Ron, I think Ron and Rick would both say we've really supplied you with a lot, not only having to do with the medical and the COVID, but having to do with a lot more, uh, in particular, some of the hurricanes. Uh, your time and your time, we had some really bad ones mm -hmm. and we came through. So uh, the, the polls are looking very good. And I think when you see those crowds of people along the roads, uh, there's a very good feeling. But what about the number of deaths we've seen in recent days? Here? Well, I hate it anywhere, but if you look at other countries, other countries are doing, uh, uh, terribly. This is a horrible disease. This is a disease that should have never happened. It's uh, something never should have been allowed to get out of China, but it did. It came here, it went to Europe, it went all over the world. It's in 188 countries. And uh, I will say this, uh, proportionately, relatively, when you look at your nursing home situation, uh, it's a tribute to your governor and government, uh, the job they've done. You've done a really great job, and you have a very big nursing home population. You've done a fantastic mm -hmm. job. So I think we're doing really well in Florida. Yeah. Mr. President, you told Axios in an interview earlier this week that you did not bring up the intelligence assessment with your con with Vladimir Putin, that they had been uh, placing bounties on our soldiers' heads. You said it was because no one had brought it to your attention, but it wasn't your presidential daily briefing. Have you been reading that briefing every day? I read it all the time. I see it today? all the time. It was never brought to my attention. I think it's another Russia hoax. Uh, they've been giving me the Russia hoax, uh, Shifty Schiff and all these characters from the day I got here. And uh, we're working with Russia right now on a 
non-proliferation agreement, nuclear non-proliferation, and uh, we can get something like that, it'd be great. But it was never brought to my attention, and uh, because it didn't reach the level, there were a lot of people, including Democrats, that said uh, it never took place. If it did take place, it would have been brought to my attention, and I would uh, take very strong action. There's been nobody tougher with Russia or China than I have, not even by a long shot. When you look at we've, what we've done compared to the past administrations, uh, it's not even a contest. We've been very tough on Russia with the sanctions and so many other things, uh, including uh, letting people know that we're not so happy about what's going on with NATO and the oil, you know. But speaking of NATO, we've raised $130 billion a year from countries from, as you know, from our partners with NATO, 28 countries. We had seven that were paid up. Now we have a very much bigger number. We're getting at $130 billion more. That's going to $400 billion. And that's money to really protect themselves, for the most part, against Russia. So nobody's done more against Russia, but uh, it was never brought to my attention. And it uh, perhaps wasn't brought because they didn't consider it to be real. And if it is brought to my attention, I'll do something about it. Mr. President, what's in your health care plan that's coming on Sunday? Well, we're going to be doing a health care plan. We're going to be doing a very inclusive health care plan. I'll be signing it sometime very soon. It, it, might, be, uh, it might be Sunday, but it's, uh, it's going to be very soon. Uh, we're also doing a full immigration plan. Uh, we're going to take care of a lot of things that for 25 years they've been trying to get an immigration plan. We're going to be doing merit-based immigration. I'm sure you'd be happy to hear that, but it's merit-based, very powerfully merit-based. It's going to be very inclusive. It's going to cover just about everything that most people would have said couldn't happen. And we'll be releasing that over the next couple of weeks. So we're, going to, we're doing a health care plan. We're doing a, uh, a immigration plan. And we're doing another one that's very important are the drugs, prescription drug prices. We pay the highest of any country in the world by far. Uh, you look at Germany and uh, you look at UK and Canada and other countries and they pay a fraction of what we pay. And we're doing a, uh, a series of signatures, which I've done, and one goes into effect very soon. But we're doing matching grants and all sorts of things that are going to bring our drug prices down at levels that nobody ever thought possible. We're doing things that nobody ever thought possible. The bad news is the pharmaceutical companies aren't exactly in love with Donald Trump. And they'll advertise. They've already started it. I see they've already started. I've seen the ads. And any time you see an ad from a pharmaceutical company against me, you know that means the drug prices are coming down. But they're going to be coming down to a level that nobody ever thought possible. Uh, we are, as an example, uh, Germany has very low prices, and we have very high prices, many times the amount. And we're doing uh, — we have to get, no matter what the price lo — lowest price in the world, that's what they have to give us. And right now, we have by far the highest price in the world. Uh, we're going to allow uh, states like Florida to go to Canada and to buy. Their prices are much lower than ours, so they're going to be able to buy directly from Canada rather than going through their traditional sources. And I think in the state of Florida, what will that cut the uh, prescription drug prices? Well, I mean, it depends on the drug, but there were some when we were doing the bill that you could get for 75 percent less in terms of what, what Canada would, would charge. How about that? 75 percent less. So they're going to be buying it approximately 75 percent less. What we're doing, really, which is the most — we're doing rebates, and the rebates are going to go to the people, and they're going to go in the form of drug reduction, drug price reduction. But we're doing something called favored nations, and nobody thought anybody would ever do that. But, look, I want what's right for the people, and it's been very unfair. So favored nations, meaning if uh, another nation's paying lower and another nation's paying even lower than that, we take the lowest nation in the world, and that's what we have to pay. Right now, we're paying many times the lowest nation in the world. You have some of these socialistic or social — well, I guess you could say socialistic nations. They have drugs at a low price. Well, we'll use that to our advantage because we're going to be getting the price that they have. Now, what's going to happen is their price will probably have to go up, and our price will go way down. Mm. And I could see 50, 60, 70 percent, maybe more than that, reduction in prices. And no other president will ever do that. And the heat I've taken in the last uh, couple of weeks because of that is unbelievable. And frankly, the ads I've taken are unbelievable. <laughs> it's sort of incredible. You see drug companies taking these they, massive ads. When we did our bill, 
there was I've never seen more ads in Florida, but the, the, the pharmaceutical was doing. I mean, I have young kids. I'm watching like Paw Patrol with them, and it goes to commercial, and it's saying that Florida, you know, they're going to bring in all these drugs from Djibouti. It's going to kill everybody. So, I mean, it, it's it was unbelievable how they papered uh, the airwaves. A lot You'll of money. Be buying the same drug that you paid a fortune for for half the price, maybe better than that even. And the exact same drug made maybe in the same factory, mm -hmm. the same company, and you're going to be paying a, a fraction of the price. But the drug companies are not happy. And look, we want them to be happy. We want them to do well with the vaccines. We want them to do well with everything. But they've made a fortune, and that's why they can afford the ads, that's for sure. Yeah. So when you see ads against us, and me in particular, because I'm the one that's uh, – I've signed uh, four acts. We'll call it executive orders. And they're the most powerful ever signed in this industry by a factor of about 20. And it's going to bring your drug prices down to a level that you've never seen before. So we're very, I'm very happy about that. Uh, the drug companies don't contribute to my campaign. I don't need their money. Uh, I haven't asked for their money. And if they did, it wouldn't matter to me anyway. But I, I am not somebody that's reliant on the drug companies. And we call it Big Pharma. Big Pharma is probably the most powerful lobbyist uh, of any lobbyist there is, probably. I don't know. Maybe the lawyer's lobby is pretty powerful, yeah. too. But Big Pharma would be just about up there. And uh, we have to do what's right. They've been talking about reducing drug prices ever since I can remember, ever since I've been starting to really watch politics with interest, which was actually at a very young age. But we've been talking about uh, drug price reductions and prescription drug reductions. and. I will tell you, you're going to see the biggest reductions in the history of our country by many times. We're not talking about a 1%. And as you know, last year, for the first time in 51 years, drug prices went down. But marginally, but they went down. First time in 51 years. So I was president, the drug prices went down first time in 51 years. Now you're going to see numbers that you wouldn't even believe, and it's going to be fair. It's not fair that other countries pay a fraction of, uh, but I mean a fraction of what we do. We pay all research and development mm -hmm. and promotional costs and everything it's put onto the United States. They pay nothing, nothing. And then on top of it, they say, this is what we'll pay and this is what it is. And the United States will pay the remainder of the difference. I mean, this is the way they buy. They go and uh, I won't mention names of, com of countries, but they say, this is what we're going to pay. The United States will make up the difference. And that's not going to happen anymore. Okay, thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you up for election this year?